Hello, welcome to my video on troubleshooting and battery replacement of the Tyson Krupp Flow X stair lift, also known as the Access BDD Flow X stair lift. It's the next generation to the Flow 2, is my understanding. And uh, as you can see from here, this part of it is fairly similar to the Flow 2. Um, so we were having trouble with the uh, stair lift getting stuck part way up. Uh, it would beep and flash lights. Couldn't figure out what to do. It's, you can't get a hold of maintenance manuals or anything like that, it seems. So anyway, so I'm just going to take you some, through some quick things I've learned. So first of all, I'm going to pop the camera just there because the first thing you can do is take off this cover. So I'm just going to get into there and pull and that just pulls out. And uh, on the back of here, you've got some codes, troubleshooting error codes. But uh, looking at the, the setup here, uh, I'm just going to have to do that. So the machine is switched on at the moment, hence that light. So I'm going to just uh, get the camera down a bit so that you can see these buttons. And there is a, a little LED display screen above the buttons. Now if you press the middle one, you get B14 in this case, which I think is the current software or firmware that's sitting on the electronics here. Then if you press it again, you get a voltage readout, 26.0 volts. You might see 26.1, it might go down into the 25s, and that might help you understand what's happening because if uh, <coughs> obviously this is on a charging point at the moment so 26.1 would be a reasonable level for that um, <coughs> uh, but if you see that coming lower then uh, that might help your troubleshooting and of course when uh, another point on the troubleshooting is if your lift is getting stuck part way up then it can be worth running it up and down without this on because if I just um, open the thing up, you're not going to hit it accidentally because the uh, the uh, this this uh, you know your feet around here. Of course, this this does rotate round there, and you're still shielding. You're not going to accidentally get your feet on that. But that's uh, your risk to make. Not I'm not suggesting that you necessarily do it. You could you could come into problems with touching some stuff there. So I'm just going to fold that back up so that's out of the way. Now, the observant among you might have seen the two 12 volt batteries, lead acid batteries, and they seem very well put in place. There's a fuse, which I guess fuses both the batteries. I'm not exactly sure, but it seems to be on this cable, which is to do with the batteries. And uh, you have to jiggle these batteries to get them out, but we'll come to that in a moment. So if you're running up and down without the cover on and you you hear a beep and stuff, you can actually look at that LED display and see what codes are coming up. So I had an absolute plethora of to codes coming up. And um, so you look on here and you find out that it's maybe low voltage or something like that, or there was even a CPU brownout, I think, which would imply a low voltage to the CPU. Uh, various things like that. So you might get a series of codes. Yours will be different to mine, probably. But um, some of the codes will be a result of a low voltage if you've got a low voltage. So it's not that the problem is with the CPU, it's the, the actual problem is with the, uh, the low voltage. So... What I did, I thought, okay, one of the modes of failure on this would be a failure on the power supply, which is at one end of your um, one end of your stair lift, one end of the rail, which is the thing that takes the mains voltage and changes it down to a 36 volt DC voltage that is then supplied. You know, there'll be a cable coming up here to the charging point under here and then it will be transferring that 36 voltage into here and then that will be then running charging on here. So there could potentially be a problem with that but in this case 
I thought, well, we'll uh, we'll see if there's a battery problem. One of the other main failure modes would be a battery problem. Um, so it turns out that you can jiggle those and they come out. Now, when you pull them out, you need to make very good record of which battery it is, the left or the right hand battery, and which way round the cables are going to it, because it's not obvious. Here in this case, red goes to red. Fine. OK. But on the other side, it's not like that at all. Now, I found this side much harder to get out, so you're jiggling it that way and up and down that way, and then you can get it out. I'm not going to pull that out, but the colour coding on the cables is different here, and it was slightly bizarre. Well, maybe I will. OK. No, I'm... <sighs> OK, yeah. Because you've got blue going to red which doesn't make any sense and uh, although the black going to black does make sense so let me see if I can get that back in now so what I did once I took the batteries out I charged up one of the batteries with my CTEC 12 volt car battery and I could put it in um, I could put it into car mode and AGM mode which is a gel battery so they are sealed batteries, but there are two types of sealed batteries and you need to make sure that you're getting an AGM, which is actually a cheaper battery, but the point of the AGM is it gives you a greater current or power output at any given moment. And these things do take a reasonable amount of power. You don't want to overheat your batteries because you've got the wrong one. So this was the original battery in there. And I was able to establish that this is an AGM battery. And... I found a specifications document for it. I might have a link for that in the description of this video or some information on the battery. And the key, obviously it's 12 volt and obviously it's sealed and it's AGM. And it's a 7-12 or some people call them a 12-7 and that's to do with the dimensions. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> once I'd got the battery out, the first one, I charged it up with the CTEC charger, and after, say, eight hours, it reached full, fully charged, so great. Um, but So then I took the second battery out, charged it, and after, goodness, after, I don't know, 18 hours, it still wasn't fully charged. So what I did, found a replacement, and the key spec that I felt was important about the replacement was that I was getting a battery that was rated for a maximum current output of 105 amps for five seconds. So that appears to be a specification that you get for a lot of, lot of batteries. Um, one battery I saw was only 48 amps for five seconds, and that potentially would be really problematic. Do inquire of your lift supplier to as for the battery you need. But I was able to get a replacement battery for you know to replace this one. Not the same brand, but again, the same spec and 105 amps for five seconds um, from our local electrical factor. I'm in a medium sized town in England and I was able to just pop up the road and buy it. I found it on their website. I reserved it online and went straight up there. So half an hour later, I was back home and able to fit it. Like I say, taking very care on the polarity. So I would recommend when you take these out, before you unplug the cables, photograph each one. Make sure your photograph shows which side you're looking at and photograph each one. You don't want to make a mistake. You can probably reference what I've shown you just here, but uh, I would recommend that. So once you've put the batteries back in, make sure they're secure and clipped in fine. And then you can just slap your... Uh, your cover back on. There we go. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, so uh, do put your comments below. Um, if you've got any extra insights into that. Uh, a new battery for this was £20. Uh, which is probably a big saving on getting an engineer out who may or may not have had the battery in his van and then had to come back later. But the process of troubleshooting this did take me quite a lot of time because there is no documentation. 
but hope you'll have more luck than me. So uh, thank you for watching. Do comment, like I say. So uh, cheers.